Welcome to our workshop on how to set up WooCommerce on your new WordPress site. In the last workshop we showed you how to install WordPress and also clean it up a little bit. And now we're ready to install some e-commerce functionality. So I'm going to show you how to install WooCommerce and then go through some of the WooCommerce settings just to set it up at a basic level. And we're also going to show you a little bit how to set up your shipping and payment options which are, which are some of the most important things you'll need to do before your site can go live. So let's get into it. So here we are logged into our WordPress administration panel. WooCommerce itself is, is actually just a plugin to WordPress so we go over here to the left we can see plugins and then underneath in the sub menu you'll see add new. So we're going to add new plugin and we're just going to type in WooCommerce and do a search. And right at the top, number one is WooCommerce accepting e-commerce. That's the one. Hit install now. Yes, we do. And then activate the plugin. Now it's installed. We're going to go set it up. Just go to WooCommerce, which is a new menu item now on the left hand side. We're going to go down to Settings. And we're just going to guide you through some of the tabs along the top and start getting you familiar with it. Depending on who you're targeting and what currency you're in, you just choose the, the correct currency. Sometimes it breaks down countries into states, I'm not sure why. Um, for us will be this site for us will be in Australian dollars um, at this stage we will allow all countries to use the site there's a whole bunch of different options here you enable the use of coupons guest checkout definitely have guest checkout um, registration pretty much we leave all of that as default but depending on what kind of site and what kind of product you're selling, you may want to have a look at that. Moving along to catalog. Okay, this is there's all kinds of customization options here on how the site is displayed. Again, if you're in another country, you want, might want to deal in pounds and inches if you have um, dimensions and, and weight that you're going to show. And right down the bottom here, this one's a little bit more interesting. This is where you actually change the thumbnail images. When you put your products up, WooCommerce will automatically give you uh, thumbnails. Okay, a thumbnail is just a, a smaller image that shows in if somebody's looking through a particular category on your site. You want to make sure you, you have a smaller image there so everything loads up a lot quicker. But obviously when they go through the product image itself, you want to see a much larger image. So WooCommerce fortunately does all that automatically for you. But we have noticed that occasionally if you put an image that might be a particularly tall image um, or particularly wide, it may not display as well as you like when it auto automatically creates the thumbnails. If you do get that, this section here is where you can come in and change the size of the thumbnails and this can really help you get rid of some blurriness or some slight um, skewing on the actual product image. So remember that in future, if you do have any problems with your thumbnails, come back to this the catalog section. Let's go have a look at pages. There's nothing here that um, we set up. What I will do actually is just keeps bugging me to install the WooCommerce pages, which you need to do. You can do that at any point. You just have to click the button and come back to settings. Now when we come to pages, Again, we would just leave this as default. For your inventory options, uh, you can enable stock management, which we clearly like to do. We can enable low stock notifications or out of stock, which is great. So again, you just set up an email. Um, we would normally send that to our shipping department or our warehouse so that uh, when something is low stock, they can reorder it or out of stock, we know about it. Low stock threshold, this is when the notifications get sent out, so when an item gets down to two left in stock, it automatically sends an email to our warehouse to let them know. And out of stock threshold, price is zero. Hide out of stock items from the catalog. 
We actually like to leave them in there, even though you're out of stock. It will clearly say that it's out of stock to customers, but customers can come and request it then. Say, hey, you know, can you get this back in or interested? Not only that, but every every product page on your site with description is adding to the content that um, that Google's looking at. So we like to keep it up there. Now, only to a point, if you've got a category page where 90% of your stock is out of stock, obviously, you know, that doesn't look good to a customer. So um, use your discretion there, but um, but in general, uh, we'll keep that unchecked. So here it says uh, stock display format always show how many in stock or only show when it's low or never show stock amount. Uh, we like this feature a lot because it means if you've got if you've got thousands of something in stock, um, a customer never feels you know particularly pressured to you know they have to get it. Whereas if they can't see how many is in stock, it's like well there could be could be not many left in stock. So there is that that extra little pressure there to for them to purchase. Um, whereas if you do only have two in stock, well, you might as well tell them and let them know that there is actually only a couple left in stock. So that's a great feature. And save that there. Now, tax. This allows you to set up different tax rates. Um, this is a uh, obviously important and also very different depending on who you're selling to and where you're selling. Um, so you'll need to determine what tax rates are relevant for you. And then you can set up different tax rates here and different um, shipping tax classes and, and all kinds of fun tax stuff, which we love. Okay, now in shipping, this is where it gets a little more interesting. Enable shipping, yes, we would like to be able to ship. Your default options here, flat rate, free shipping, international delivery, local delivery, local pickup. These are all options you can switch on and off. This little section down here is more about the ordering that the customer will see it. If you have a preference that you'd like to choose, you just simply drag it above the others. In its default state, the status we've actually only got free shipping is the only one enabled. So to enable and to adjust each of the shipping categories, you just look at these links at the top here. So for us, we normally like just to have a, a flat rate shipping. And again, it'll totally depend on in what site, what products you're selling and where you are, what um, shipping methods that you have available to you for your site and your products. To enable it, click the box and you can say where um, each, you know, you might have, for instance, free shipping options, but only in the local, only for your, your domestic customers, not for international. So you have this option for all of these. Taxable, cost per order. You know, this is, this is just flat rate shipping means that all of our products have this is how much shipping costs. Um, because we like shipping smaller items, we often find that a lot of our shipping rates are, are pretty similar across our ranges. So we have a pretty good idea what Courier is going to cost and what Express is going to cost. Um, but you're, if you haven't done this before or you're dealing with a product that's a little bit different from anything else that you've got, you'll need to go out and figure out what is going to be the best shipping and handling cost for you to put here. And whether or not you're going to use a flat rate shipping or more of a calculated shipping. You can actually add shipping classes to all your different kinds of products. Um, for us, we're just going to keep it across the range. We always love having a free shipping option. Free shipping always works well, even if you have to uh, do it um, at a certain threshold. We're going to make our free shipping for our door handles just within Australia only. Does it require a coupon or a minimum order amount? We like uh, minimum order amount. So if somebody say orders over $60 worth of door handles, they'll immediately get a free shipping option that they can use. And so on and so forth. You can have uh, local delivery, local pickup if you want to have local pickup. And um, they're all pretty easy to set up. And again, you'll probably want to change your allowed countries for local pickup. Payment gateways. Okay, similar sort of setup here. This is just shuffling how they're displayed during checkout. By default here, we've got check payment, direct bank transfer, PayPal, uh, cash on delivery, and credit card. With WooCommerce, you do get a couple of options that you can have straight away for free. WooCommerce is a free plugin, but the way they make their money is by having uh, little extras that you've got to pay for. Uh, a lot of those are focused around 
different merchant gateways. So if you're with a particular bank, whether it's in the US or the UK or Australia, we've got plugins for pretty much all of them. Um, and if you want to use your own merchant facility, it's still pretty easy to implement thanks to those plugins, but they will cost you extra. If you just want some free options, you don't want to pay for the extra plugins initially, then you've still got uh, check payment if you wish, which we don't. We rarely accept. We don't like accepting checks. They take too long to clear and they create too much extra hassle. The BACS here is, is just for bank transfer. Account name, account numbers, sort code if you're living um, in Australia or New Zealand, that's the BSB code. Bank name and usually these are more for international transfers so you can leave them blank. PayPal. Now PayPal have got a lot of different options when it comes to how to integrate their payment system into your site. Some of them cost money, some of them are only allowed in the US, um, but this particular one here, which is free, is PayPal standard. This is where you set up a PayPal account and you'll get you'll use an email address to set that up and that becomes your PayPal account um, email. It's effectively uh, what you use to, to get funds into your account is to use that email. You can see here PayPal email, that's where you put your PayPal email in. And when somebody buys something from your site, adds it to their cart and they check out, they'll be taken to the PayPal site where they can pay via credit card or using their PayPal account. Now once upon a time when we first started, uh, if you just used this kind of PayPal system, um, it was thought that it lowered your conversion rate because people had to be were taken off your site uh, to, to go use this PayPal thing, which wasn't necessarily all that well known and could turn people off. From our perspective these days, it couldn't be more different. People actually, I think, a lot of people prefer using PayPal because it does, they actually trust PayPal and they don't necessarily know your site. So in this case, um, we really like the PayPal standard now and that's all we use. Um, merchant accounts can be very costly to set up, costly to run, um, and, and quite painful to set up as well dealing with banks whereas doing doing just using PayPal we haven't found it's changed our conversion rate and it's so easy to set up. It also means that the security aspect of, of the transaction whether they're using a credit card or their own PayPal account it's all handled by PayPal which is, is now you know the most recognized and secure payment system in the world so we're more than happy with just using PayPal and bank transfer for our sites and um, it's worked for us so that's all we can really say on the topic is that it works for us and I would definitely recommend that you just start out with that, particularly if you're starting out. Don't go crazy about getting merchant accounts um, unless you really feel that you need to test it for yourself. Everything else here you can leave blank, just put in your PayPal email. The only other thing you have to look at is the enable PayPal sandbox under gateway testing. What the PayPal sandbox is, is it's quite good actually. PayPal allows you to create a fake PayPal account with fake funds. And if this box is checked, what it means is you can go through and actually conduct a transaction, um, buy a product with this fake account, and just, just make sure that everything works and you'll see what the order email looks like. You'll be able to see everything from a customer's perspective without actually having to put through an actual payment. So it's worth doing once or twice when you're first setting up your store, but once you're ready to go live, uh, you have to make sure you uncheck that and then save changes. Because this is an example site for now, we're just going to leave that checked just to make sure nobody can actually go through and buy any of our, our products when we eventually put them on. On to emails. Okay, email sender options, the from name, the from email address, you might want to change that to uh, Yeah, we might change that from our customer support address. When you, when when emails come out from the site to the customer, like they make an order and they get their invoice, it'll come out with a little uh, header on top, and it looks okay. But uh, you can add your own down the track to brand it. Not massively important right now, but um, it's because branding does become very important later down the track. You will want to come back and revisit this at some point, and make sure your emails are going out with your brand. Uh, 
as the header and all the way all the way through the process. The only thing we're going to do right now is just get rid of the powered by WooCommerce. You can also change um, the colors to match your header if you add a new header and hit save changes. In integration we'll go through this another day but there's a couple of things like adding your Google Analytics ID, ID. Um, and also there's a, a couple of unique little options here. You, these are other sites that you have to go to and sign up but you can still do this for free and they allow you to do little uh, fun discounts. If somebody's checking out they can actually get say 5% or 10% or whatever you specify off their order if they go and share their order on all their social networks which is uh, it's a great idea and it's a nifty little way to socially share all of your products and also um, give your customers a little bit of a, a discount. So that concludes our WooCommerce setup as you can see there's quite a few things you can go through there and uh, things will change depending on what product you are selling and where you are um, but that's that's basically your, your WooCommerce setup. It's pretty easy, it's pretty straightforward and it's quite user friendly so we really like it. Next thing you have to do to, to make sure that your site actually looks like a good e-commerce site that converts well and is user friendly is to add a theme and this is one of the actually the, the most important things that we'll be doing when it comes to setting up our site so be sure to tune in for the next workshop this will be talking about how we can set up uh, the My Shop theme which is the theme that we use across our different sites and we'll see you then. Thanks for watching this Talking Business Workshop. If you enjoyed it, then hit like, or better yet, if you know someone that could benefit greatly from this video, share it with them. All the tools that we mention, whether they're paid or free, are listed below, and sometimes we get some pretty good deals on them, so be sure to use our links. If you want more workshops, head back to talkingbusiness.com, but if you need the blueprint, grab yourself a copy of our book, Retail Rebellion, and we'll see you next time.